So what are we talking about here? Well, this is a pretty crazy looking uh, mathematical symbology notation. So if you've never seen this before, you might you know, be thinking to yourself, what is this? And uh, no need to be alarmed. This is basically something called infinite geometric series. Okay, And if you are taking algebra, or maybe like college algebra, pre-calculus, yeah, certainly like algebra two, okay, at least algebra two and beyond, you're going to encounter a topic called sequence and series, okay? And I'll go ahead and explain this real quick, the difference between a sequence and a series. Here is a sequence of numbers, one, two, three. Of course, this pattern continues on and on and on. So this is a sequence. A series is when we add the numbers in a sequence. Okay, so this is a sequence and this is a series. And of course, this is a huge topic in mathematics. But uh, again, don't let the notation, you know, um, you know, uh, intimidate you so much that you're like scared of the stuff, right? Uh, again, when you're learning math, you just certainly just have to take it one step at a time. But what we're going to try to do here and not actually try, we're actually going to do is we're going to find the sum of this infinite geometric series. So if you're studying this stuff and you want to review uh, infinite geometric series, we're going to use this as a little practice problem just to you know, talk about exactly how you find the sum of a geometric series if you can find the sum. Okay, that's a whole other little uh, discussion. And I'm going to get to all of this in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so if you think you can do this problem, and you're familiar with infinite geometric series, and you've been studying this in your class, you're like, yeah, I can do this. It's not... Not that difficult. Go ahead and pause the video and you know come up with your answer. But I'm going to get into exactly what this is and how we solve this right now. Okay, so what does this notation mean here? Okay, so for those of you that are new to series and sequence, and if you're brand new to this stuff, this might you know be a little bit on the advanced side, but you still stick around because I still think you could figure this out. This notation here is called sigma. Okay, it just means add up. Okay, and we're going to start with n is equal to zero. We're going to plug in a zero right there, and then we're going to index up zero, one, two, three, etc. And we're going to stop at infinity. So some of you might be thinking, stop at infinity? Yes, that's a, that's the idea. Now remember, this uh, describes a series. So this is how it works. Okay, so let's start with n is equal to zero. So you're going to take this one half. We're going to plug zero up there, and anything to the zero power is uh, one. Okay, so this is going to be one, and I'm going to talk about all this in a second, but let's move on and index this up to n now is equal to one. We already did zero, so let's move up to one. So now this becomes one half to the first power. You see, we replace this n with the one, and then we just go up to the next number, that's two, so that becomes one half squared, and we're adding each one of these. Uh, terms in the series okay so this is the first term this is the second term this is the third term and we just continue to go on and on here's where n is equal to 3 okay and um, we're gonna do this into infinity now if that is the case I'm gonna add up all these values so 1 half to the first power is 1 half 1 half squared is 1 fourth 1 half cubed is 1 eighth right 1 half times 1 half times 1 half and then we're just going to continue this through infinity. Now, it would be a pretty long time to actually add up all these numbers. One half plus one, I'm sorry, one plus one half plus one fourth plus one eighth, da, 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 da. It would take us infinitely long time to get a sum, okay? Now, can, is, are we going to actually have an infinite uh, or finite sum? Is this all going to add up? Let's take a look at what's going on here. We start with one. Then the next number is smaller than one, okay, one half of that. Then the next number is one half of that. The next number is one half of that. So these numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller that we're adding up. So at, uh, if you look at the pattern, if you think about it, these numbers are getting smaller, 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 smaller. If we go out to infinity, eventually it's going to be infinitely small. So conceptually, you might think to yourself, well, this is going to stop one day, okay, 
can we add this up into a finite sum? Okay, finite sum. Did I spell that right? I don't think I did. Anyways, let me just go ahead and abbreviate it. All right, that's what happens. That's what I do when I don't know how to spell <laughs> finite. I know how to spell finite. F-I-N-I-T. All right. So this is what happens when you make a lot of videos. You just have to throw it out there. If you make a spelling error, it is what it is. All right, so, um, so this right here, yes, can be, uh, we will get a finite sum. Now, the reason why is because right here, this is our what we're going to call our R. It's our common ratio, but it's less than one. Okay, it's a fraction. It's less than one. If this is less than one, then when we're talking about an infinite, all right, an infinite geometric, okay, this R right here means it's geometric series, we will have a finite sum. Okay, so in other words, when I add up all these guys, I will get one number. Interesting, okay? Now, one thing that I want to um, talk about here is our first number. When we had n is equal to zero, this right here, this is our a sub one. This is the first, um, our first term in this series. Uh, one half is our second term. So this little subscript notation you should be familiar with as well. Okay, so now that we know that, let's go ahead and actually get to the secret to getting the answer here. Well, the secret is this formula right here. And it's basically saying, if you have a series, this means a series, right? We're adding up and it's going from zero to infinity. So that's infinite. This is an infinite series. And this little R, when you see is um, a series, it has this R, this common ratio. We're talking about geometric. So this is, ge this is a geometric infinite uh, series. So when it has your first term, a sub one R, uh, and minus one. So this is basically what we have right here. Here is how we're going to uh, find the solution. Okay, you're just going to take that first term of your infinite geometric series, one minus the common ratio r. Okay. All right. So what is r? Well, let's start with this. This number right here, one half. You can see that's our common ratio. Okay. And then what is our first term? Okay. What was a sub one? A sub one was our first term of our series when we plugged in zero up here, right? So one half to the zero power is one. So let's go back up here. I know this can be a little bit confusing, but our first term, okay, of this infinite geometric series was one or is one. Okay, so we need A sub one, all right? So we know what that is, that's one. And our first term, and then we know what our common ratio is here, it is R and we know that our common ratio, the absolute value of it, is less than one. That is a condition, okay, that is required uh, in order for us to actually calculate the sum, a finite sum, okay. Uh, if your ratio is greater than one, then there, there, your um, infinite geometric series will not have a sum. All right, so now we just basically plug this stuff right into that formula. Again, it's going to be the first term. Okay, let's just go up here and look here, right? First term over one minus R, we just do this right here and we're gonna get the sum. That's what this means. It's gonna be the sum of that infinite geometric series. So the sum of that infinite geometric series, we take our first term. So let me scroll up here a bit so you can see. Our first term is one and that's gonna be one minus the common ratio, which is one half. So one minus one half. And now it's just simple, basic mathematics. So this is gonna be one divided by one minus one half is one half, and that's gonna be one times uh, two over one or two. Okay, so that is the answer. The sum of that of this particular infinite geometric series is two, right? In other words, up here, if we kept going forever and ever and ever to infinity, and we added up all these terms, okay, out to infinity, the answer would be two. All right, now, uh, sequence and series is tremendously important, especially as you progress in your mathematics. Um, you know, eventually, if you decide to take, like, calculus, you're going to see a ton of uh, sequence and series. Very, very important to understand this. So this is not one of these little things that, you know, you study one time and you're like, you'll never see it again. It's not the case in math. Matter of fact, your attitude in terms of uh, learning math, okay, if you tend to take uh future math courses, and even if you don't intend to, uh, to take, you just never know. You might end up having to take more math courses 
everything builds upon itself. Everything is important, right? That's why, you know, even though you might not do more sequence and series problems after, let's say, this chapter or section or unit that you might be studying, but, you know, have this down in your notes. Have these formulas and stuff. You, mean, you couldn't remember all these formulas and everything else. You have to take great notes. you got to show examples. And don't ever, when you take excellent math notes, don't throw them away at the end of your course. Have them as your own personal reference. Believe me, they can come in handy. Um, and again, you know, whatever uh, math level that you might be at, you might be uh, studying this in pre-calculus, algebra 2, college algebra. You never know. You might end up taking... Uh, a calculus course. Okay, so this is good stuff to always just retain until you're absolutely sure you are done with math in your life, or at least, you know, formally learning it. All right, so if this video helps you out in some small way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics, all there for you. So if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of content, all types of topics. Uh, just go into my various playlists um, and, you know, search through it. But my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.